Northwest is a very special place. Um, basically about 80% uh, at this point about LGBTQ. Um, we were a small congregation starting out. It was a young congregation uh, when I went there about, I think 14 years old, 13 years old. Um, and it was started by a group of six straight couples uh, and their families from the First Congregational Church of Las Vegas, who at the time was not open and affirming. Um, they went through just a couple of pastors. They had one long-term pastor uh, for about 10 years. Um, but I was going to be the first gay pastor, first out gay pastor of this congregation. Um, I knew going in that this was probably one of the only places in Las Vegas where I could minister in that way and be free and be open about who I was. Uh, so that part was exciting to me. Uh, but I also realized that there were going to be some risks involved. Um, you know, how do you communicate with colleagues? How do you uh, find your place in the, um, the group of ministers within Las Vegas? Um, how do you find out how to relate to people as a gay pastor? How do they want to hear it? How do you want to express it? Um, I think the greatest reward for me personally was just being able to be in a place and not have to censor what I said, uh, how I acted, uh, who I loved. Uh, and that was, that was a blessing. The, um, the thing for the church I think was interesting was that being a gay man, I think there are a different set of boundaries that we have to, to adhere to. Um, obviously, boundary training covers some of them, and a lot of them are crossovers uh, for regular heterosexual uh, relationships. But our, you know, our subculture, the, the gay subculture is, is so social, and we have for so many years had to find places to be, to be social. Um, that included a lot of bars, uh, nightclubs, um, you know, civic choruses and, and things like that. Uh, but this was a church, this was an open place. And so trying to, trying to even set those boundaries for myself, uh, realizing that yes, I was going to be out with my people um, in the community. We would be out at places that would be considered gay exclusive. And how do I as a pastor Number one, be in those places and be able to live authentically in that. And number two, set the boundaries with the parishioners that we're here just like we would go, you know, to a, to a Denny's or something for dinner. We are in this place sharing fellowship with each other. Um, and I think that was a risk for the people. I think that they, the LGBT folks in the church at the time really gravitated toward me. I feel like the church really finally for the most part, found out who they were and that that was okay. Uh, so there was an, a, a great deal of excitement, I think, about having this gay pastor that we can finally claim our identity. Uh, not that the other pastors were anti-gay or bad, um, very sensitive, uh, very involved in the community, very involved in social justice issues. But, you know, coming to the congregation as an out gay pastor, there was a strengthened think, I think connection between, you know, maybe some of the social justice issues, um, those that surrounded um, LGBT issues, um, riding on the float. Um, I'll never forget my church had me pass out safe sex packets on the parade from a church, which, you know, was a little uncomfortable for me at first, but then I realized this was my community trying to care for its people. Um, so, so the boundary issue, I think, is something that, you know, I think the church has to really realize that you're hiring a pastor, not a new gay bud. Um, although there obviously is going to be some crossover in just the day-to-day -day, uh, relationship issues. Um, with the, the folks in Las Vegas, the other ministers, I found it very hard to be connected to them. Um, I attended one, only one, uh, ministerial association meeting. The church wanted me to be involved in that. And I, at that point, saw a great deal of, of posturing from the other clergy. Um, there weren't any women in this clergy group at that time. There, there are now, I found out. Uh, and I was the only gay person, and so there was 
you know, I was the odd man out um, and did not feel comfortable being a part of that. Um, probably now, if I went back into it, I would have stuck it out and said, I'm here, deal with it. Um, but, you know, I felt like my energies and, and any angst that I had needed to be directed toward my ministry with the church. And I didn't want to be sidelined by trying to be accepted by this outside group. Um, you know, with boundaries, I think one of the things we learn as pastors is that we are not called to be people's friend. Um, some churches adhere to this uh, unspoken rule or guideline stronger than others. Um, but I think it's important in a church that has an out gay pastor and whether there's a, a lot of uh, LGBT folk in the congregation or not. But it's important, I think, for the pastor to realize that our need to be liked or my personal need to be liked was exponentially greater than I think the normal. I didn't really feel I could go in and just do the normal thing that a pastor would do, but I need to make, pe make sure people liked me because I'm gay and I'm different. Um, and so I think that's something, you know, that, that has to be guarded against on both sides, uh, the pastor and the congregation. Um, but you know, the rewards, man, the rewards were great. And I saw a, a church basically triple in size over a period of five years. Um, this church that started from, you know, basically 12 people, six couples and their kids, um, very few left. I only know of one active church member that we have several die. Uh, some people have left the church, uh, moved away, but, um, to see the growth in this church and really living into who they are and being okay with that. Um, of course, our, our marketing to the, to the community, we always tried to, to cross market. We didn't want to be just the gay church, but we wanted to embrace that, uh, that identity because there were so many people that really wanted that. I mean, outside of the MCC, uh, when I began there, there really wasn't another place for LGBT, LGBT folks to, to gather and worship and to be in not only community, but be in beloved community, a place where they could uh, fully grow into who they were as people. Uh, so the risks, the risks are there. I think they're more of just things to be aware of um, and concerns as opposed to anything um, destructive. Uh, but boundaries important. Um, boundaries coupled with living into your full authentic self, I think, um, are, are two things that could really, really help a church and a new pastor in the situation.